Hello everyone, welcome to Switch Up and welcome to another episode of our Battle in the Backlog series. In this series I make my way through my quite substantial backlog, I've got 8 more games cleared off of it to share with you in this particular video, and I will document my experience with them, give you a rundown of my thoughts and feelings about them, how long they took to complete and whether ultimately they are worth picking up for you if you haven't yet played them. I've got quite a varied list of games to go through, from visual novels to platformers to multiplayer experiences and strategy games. So which games have I finally cleared from the in-tray of gaming? Well, let's find out. Okay, going in chronological order from when they were beaten, the first game I beat recently was Spirit Hunter NG. Now I actually beat the game that this follows on from, Spirit Hunter Deathmark, in the previous video. A link to that video and a couple of previous episodes if you're interested will be in the top pinned comment. Like its predecessor, this is a visual novel which has a supernatural and a mystery element to it. This time you play as a young man who must try to find his sister who has been kidnapped by spirits. You will team up with a host of different characters, exploring a variety of locations, taking on spirits from urban legend, trying to find out their grudge so that you can pacify them and allow them to move on. Again, like its predecessor, each area you visit takes the form of a first person view, a bit like an old dungeon crawler from back in the day, where you'll be moving on a grid, searching points of interest and finding clues and items that will aid you in your quest. I liked the way that this linked to the previous game, not in an explicit way, you don't have to have played the first one before this one, but it just hinted towards it, there was a little side quest which kind of tied them together in a nice way. And I really did enjoy the story with this one, I really cared about the characters. Now I didn't pay the eShop price, which is the price I always put at the bottom of the screen, most of these I would have picked up physically where possible, and I think this one cost me about £22, and for the 20 hours of gameplay that I got out of it, I was more than happy with that purchase. The next game that I beat then was for review purposes and this was Signs of the Sojourner. This is a card deck building game but it's based on conversations rather than battling and it's actually quite an interesting take on the genre. You play as a character who has recently lost their mother and must take on the family business travelling on the caravans around the different towns picking up items to sell in your store. The way to build relationships with people and get wares to sell though is to converse with them and you do this with your cards. So basically all of the cards that you have have particular symbols on them and you must chain them together with the other person to complete a conversation. Now you can only have so many cards in your deck as you would expect which means that sometimes you may have to drop cards you know will help you talk to one person to take on cards that will help you talk to someone else and it's a really good balancing act trying to get your deck right so that you don't limit yourself on the one hand but you don't spread yourself too thin either. I think this took about 4 hours to complete so it's not a very long game. Obviously I had to rush through it for review purposes, it would have been nice to play it at a slower pace actually and spread it over a couple of weeks. If you do want more information on this one check out the link in the top pinned comment to the review but I did enjoy my time with it although I probably would wait for a sale personally before picking it up. The next game I beat then was a game that I'd wanted to play for a long time but I was actually waiting to get the Japanese import which has English on the cartridge. This is Valhalla Cyberpunk Bartender Action. I guess you would class this as a visual novel, I can't really think of another category it would fit nicely into but you basically play as a bartender where you must talk to the patrons of the bar, listening to their stories and serving them drinks. Sometimes they'll explicitly ask for something, other times they'll give you a hint as to what it is they want and you must use the hints to try and give them the ideal drink. The happier they are the more they'll talk and the better you'll go into the game, getting one of the better endings, I think there are 6 in total to strive towards. I love the way it used its cyberpunk narrative, it is quite a mature game I must say that and it has characters such as hackers, hitmen, pleasure robots and a host of others and I really loved how they explained the lore of this particular world. I think the eShop price for this game is about £10.99 or your regional equivalent which will be at the bottom of the screen. Again if you like these sort of games that's an absolute no brainer, obviously I paid more for the physical version but for the 10 or so hours that I got out of it, maybe 12 hours, it was well worth it and I can see myself coming back to this one in a few months time when I've forgotten a bit about the story.
Next then we have Shovel Knight Shovel of Hope, the original Shovel Knight game. Now whilst the information I've put at the bottom of the screen relates to that specific game, Shovel of Hope, because that's the one I'm talking about, I actually played it via the Treasure Trove edition, which I got physically for about 20 quid, an absolute bargain. Now, I did intend to play one of the other chapters with one of the other characters because I have actually beaten Shovel Knight before on the 3DS, but I loved the game so much I couldn't help but start with that first one again. For me, this is one of the best platformers of modern times, and it was definitely one of the games, maybe not the game, but that reintroduced the idea of a retro-inspired platformer, and it did it to fantastic effect. It's difficult, but nowhere near as difficult as the games that inspired it. I think my play time was something like 6 hours 14 minutes according to the game. And to be honest, I can't wait to dive into the other characters and finish their stories off too. The next one I beat was a game called Candle the Power of the Flame. This is an action adventure game with point and click elements. You must lead your protagonist across a number of different levels and environments, picking up items as you would in a point and click game until they are needed later. But you must also traverse a number of environmental hazards and there are certainly plenty of things out there that can kill you if you're not careful. The first thing to say about it is the aesthetic of the game is absolutely beautiful. It crafts a world that is equal part or inspiring as it is creepy and the use of colour is incredibly impressive. There are other elements to it that really do push the production values such as the narrator and I believe it's the same person that narrated the Trine games and his voice gives it the necessary gravitas to make it feel like someone reading you an old fable. On the positive side, I did like some of the point and click elements, there were some clever parts in there, there were some puzzles to solve which I enjoyed, and I also liked the way that it all comes together sometimes, you can't kill enemies directly, so you had to lay traps for them at particular points, and this was a very interesting part of the game. On the more negative side, the controls are incredibly clunky. It definitely takes some getting used to, pulling yourself up onto ledges, using particular items, it can get a bit frustrating at times. There were other little niggles that I had, such as every conversation you had with a character being played out via speech bubbles in pictorial form, but once you'd sat and watched this, the narrator would then tell you what had been said, so it took twice as long as it should have done. Nothing major, but just little things that started to drag the game down the further I went into it. It took about 8 hours to complete, and I was happy I played it. This was one I picked up ages ago in a shop over here in the UK called Game. I think I got it for about £10, so it was definitely worth that. It might be one that's worth picking up on a sale if you see it going for cheap. And game number 6 for this video is a game called Raji, an ancient epic. Now this was a game that I played ages ago for a video. It wasn't a full review, we did like an impressions video after a couple of hours play. So after those first couple of hours, I kind of just dropped it. Not because I wasn't enjoying it, just because other things came up. I think it's a relatively large download, I'm not talking huge, about 6 gig, And I just had to delete it for space for the next review code. I got a hankering to play it the other day and re-downloaded it. And I really did enjoy it. It's an action adventure game based in India and I loved the look of the game, it looks absolutely beautiful, it's a wonderful setting for a game and it would be great to see more games venture out into countries that you don't traditionally see featured in video games. In terms of the game itself then, well it was kind of a hybrid between something like an old school Prince of Persia game and something like the first couple of God of War games or a game I used to really enjoy on the Xbox 360 called Dante's Inferno. It has the jumps off ledges and the wall runs, things like that as well as that quite visceral combat with lots of heavy and light attacks. You play as Raji as she looks to rescue her younger brother Golu, and you have gifts and powers bestowed upon you by the gods as you get further into the game. Some of the platforming sections can be quite fiddly, and I did have a few problems with perspective in terms of the jumps, trying to make the jumps, which could be a bit annoying, but on the whole I did really enjoy this game. Now it took me about 6 hours to finish, and it does cost about £22.49, or your regional equivalent, which is quite a lot of money for the amount of time you get, and unfortunately it doesn't have a physical release because of course sometimes you can pick those up a bit cheaper. Now it does I've just seen have a demo on the eShop so it might be worth checking that out and possibly waiting for a sale if you think the price is a bit too steep. Although I don't often remember seeing this one going on sale I must say. Oh wow! 
white peacock. What can it mean? What are those creatures that chase it? On to game number seven now, this is Fallen Legion Revenant. And this is the game that took me the most time of all of these to complete, coming in at around 25 hours, and it is most definitely the game I enjoyed the least. Now, I actually reviewed this game a few months back. Again, link to the review is in the top in comment, and I didn't actually finish it for review purposes because it crashed on me for a third time right near the end of the game. I was so frustrated with it, I had to stop there. It was one of those times where I just felt I had to go back and finish it, otherwise it would have felt like complete wasted time. So I kind of picked it back up, thinking to myself if it crashed a fourth time, I'd be done, but thankfully it didn't. I actually had about five hours more to go, which is more than I expected, but that's just because the game drags on unbelievably towards the end. It's incredible how much they drag the ending out. It's ridiculous. To give you some context of the game, apologies, it's basically split into two parts where you play as the leader of a revenant group taking on enemies and also as a politician trying to aid the rebel revenants from the inside. Now I'm sure it sounds very interesting, I thought so, but it doesn't work at all. The parts playing as the politician, Lucian, are incredibly dull. You basically walk around from screen to screen, clicking on people's names, waiting for them to say something, or hiding behind pillars and posts as you try to sneak around in the dark. It's really boring. And then you have the combat system, which is actually a lot of fun, and I did enjoy it when I first started, but because the game is so long, you are absolutely sick and tired of it by the end. And it's a shame because it drags the only redeeming quality of the game down with it. I've played much worse games in this, don't get me wrong, but I don't think I've played many in recent memory at least that were as boring as this one was. And to be honest, that's just as bad in some ways. And the final game then, this was just a few days ago, this is Untitled Goose Game. Now again, I bought this game physically a little while ago, and the reason I bought it was because for a while, it was quite readily available and going for quite a cheap price, and then it just disappeared off of any gaming website that I use to order physical games, and I wondered if it was going to be one of those that would be quite hard to come across in the future. So as soon as it came back into stock, I picked it up. Now I played this in multiplayer with my wife one Sunday afternoon, when our baby son went for his nap. I think I'm right in saying that this didn't actually have multiplayer when it first released, that was added later as an update, and if that is the case, I honestly couldn't see myself playing it in single player. It's just so much fun and such a good experience with another person. You basically play as a goose or two geese, trying to cause havoc across a variety of different settings, and you have a to-do list of things that you have to do, mischief that you have to get up to, and this is why the co-op works so well, because you have to discuss with your partner how to do it. Now, it doesn't last very long at all. I think we beat the whole game in about three hours, and when I was younger, I might have been a bit disgruntled by that, paying 15-odd quid for three hours of gameplay, but these days, to be honest, that's absolutely ideal. Obviously, we didn't do it all in one sitting. When our son woke up, we stopped, but we did return to it later that night and finished it off, and it was just a great time, a lovely little game to play on a Sunday, didn't outstay its welcome, and we had a lot of fun with it. So there you have it, I'm very pleased to have got another 8 games off the backlog, although in the time I finished these, I think I've picked up about another 20, so there we go. A few of these I would absolutely recommend as I said, a couple I would wait for a sale on, and there was that one that I wouldn't recommend at all personally. Links to any of the videos that we've done on these particular games will be in the top in comment. Now please do put any games that you've recently finished in the comments section. I do really enjoy reading about games other people have played. If you want to give us a brief synopsis of the game or just whether you enjoyed it, whether it was worth it, that would be great. It's lovely to have everyone sharing their recent experiences with video games. A quick thank you to our Patreons as always for your continued support and to each and every one of you for watching our videos. Take care, stay safe of course and until next time, happy gaming.